A rising tide raises all ships. So when the market is booming, every stock is going to go up. For all the people out there who send me messages thanking me so much for my stock advice, I never give stock advice. What I give is my evaluation of a company. And when the market's up a lot, I will not take credit for a stock going up a lot. As Warren Buffett will say, you don't know who's naked until the tide recedes. So just like in 2000, the dot-com bubble, I'm asking you to look at stocks and investments like a relationship. And it's not just about where's the euphoria and excitement, but where is the we get along. The we get along is where's the cash flow. The hype is the euphoria and excitement of getting married and all that stuff. And nobody can do any wrong. That doesn't last forever. But the companies that last forever are the relationships that last forever. The ones that have cash flow, the ones that get along well. A rising tide will raise all ships and you won't know who's naked until the tide recedes. And the tide receding is a bear market. And once a bear market happens, a bad one, there will be a time when people say, well, so obvious ARK investment wasn't going to work out. It was so obvious Tesla was overpriced. I mean, they only sold half a million cars and they're worth $800 billion. It's really obvious they went and lost 90% of their value, 80, 95% of their value. Well, I'm saying it now. Nobody, Not many people are saying it. So if it was so obvious, why is everybody saying it? That's what I hear heard in the 2000 dot-com bus. That's what I heard in 06 and 07 about the real estate bus. The short run stocks are a voting machine, the long run they're a weighing machine. History has shown that IPOs don't do well over long periods of time. Could it pop next week? Absolutely, it could pop. First day, it could pop. It could go up 100%. It could go up. I don't know what it's going to do. My point is, what's the company about? How do they generate cash flow? And what's the future of that cash flow going to look like? Because every single investment is about the present value of all future cash flows. In just terms of IPOs, Paul, there are some other popular IPOs. I'd love to maybe look at. This was an IPO last year. Um, obviously, it had a tremendous uh, initial run and it, it's backed down. A lot of people lost a lot of money. Can you pull up the Everything Money software? Or you're sure? Okay, you're well, on my charts. So. so guys, it went public. It is up a lot still went public. Since it went public, look how high it got, guys. This is $39 a share, 38.17. It's all the way down to 23 bucks. So here's my argument. Now, the same can be said about value investing. The difference is hype needs the short run. And if the short run hype is incredible, why is it down almost 50% from its high? If it was such an incredible stock with upside potential, it's huge. Why is it down 50%? The market's up, and yet this stock is down almost 50%. Because hype eventually subsides. Hype eventually goes away. How do we have a $41 billion company with free cash flow of $92 million? It's just really, really difficult to have that happen. I don't need to show anything else besides that. And I love Peter Thiel, or Thiel, however you pronounce his last name. I love him. I think he's great. But at some point, you got to sit there and say, am I willing to pay $41 billion? What does the company have to generate in free cash flow for me to be okay with $41 billion? One, $2 billion, a lot of growth potential? Maybe so. It's so far away from that. That's the hard part, guys. It's so, so far away from that. I'm just saying from a fundamental standpoint, all the numbers are just ugly. I'd rather pay $41 billion. I'd rather pay $80 billion for this company. What years from now, when it's generating $4 billion in profit, $5, 6000000000 billion in profit. Some of you say, well, Paul, you could have bought it at $23. Now it's $45. Yeah, but I bought a more secure situation. That's what I'm after. I'm after buying a more stable and secure. I'd rather pay more for more stability and more security. Um, I, I knew there wasn't much to say about Palantir in your opinion, uh, and which you've taught, uh, taught myself and all of our sort of everything minions is to stay away from a, a hype stock like this. You know, my son wants to buy Roblox, Paul. Now, Roblox, fan again, another one, just like Tesla, fantastic company, uh, terrible stock price. And uh, I, I show people the chart for Roblox, what, 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 what it opened at and what it is now. There you go. Oh, geez. It just went public like last month. Yes. Oh, look at this disruption. Um, opened at $69.50. It's currently $70.90. Sick. <laughs> I don't see why charts not showing any revenue. Here's the revenue. There we go. Peanut. Okay. That's pretty good. Show it to me now. More and more losses. More and more losses. Oh, they keep the shares outstanding. the same. Good for them. Why does uh, Geo want Roblox? What do they even do? Jake's saying it's, it's a video game platform, not just a game. Yeah, I wouldn't even know. But I mean, yeah. Another, another one we had, which is really interesting. If you pull up the charts for Snowflake, this was another IPO that came out last year. Pretty interesting. We've done a video on Snowflake before. And look at this, Paul. 
Oh my God, look at this chart. The first price we have is September 16th at 254, and now it's at 233. It got as high at 387, and now it's 253, it's at 233. So it's lower than when it went public. Now that's not the IPO price. That's the first price that hit the market. So it probably was IPO'd at a different price. Remember people, unless you have a lot of money and your bank loves you, you're not getting IPO price. You're getting the first market price. The first market price here was 254, and now it's at $234. So it's down 20 bucks, about 10%, since it, about 8% since it went public. That's sick. There's not much revenue to go off of. I don't see a comparison for years. They've lost a lot of money. The revenue here is 510 million, lost 539. I mean, what is there really to discuss? Why don't you pull up DoorDash, Paul? I want you to get a look at DoorDash. DoorDash, when I uh, came out, uh, went public last year with the IPO. All right, another one. <laughs> Yippee! 189.51, 127 now. Yippee! <laughs> People in the comments are saying, are you there, Seth? What if I just left the show, Paul, and just left you there in Mexico? <laughs> Just people are asking about Airbnb. Do you want to pull it up? I mean, I guess I actually do agree. I, I agree with um, RJ Wolf. Airbnb is disruptive. I do agree with that. I do think that Airbnb is 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 a disruptive company, and you didn't see it in Kathy Woods's uh, Ark Investment. I do think Airbnb is this is disruptive. They went and took an entire hotel industry and said, "Hey, people, instead of staying at a hotel, stay here." And oh, by the way, you have a house that you have rented. They can come rent it for, a, you know, whatever amount of money. I think it's a phenomenal idea. Will you pull up Airbnb and give us a look at it? All right. This one's up a little bit. It went public at 144. Now it's at 180. Not bad. Let's okay. See. So here are the financials here by, by wow. They're, oh, that makes sense. No, it was a lot of travel. That's why the revenue was down. Boy, look at that loss last year. Whew. Wow. Four and a half billion. Yeah. Now, granted, you know, I, I, what, what are they selling for? $110 billion. Jesus Christ. What does that mean, Paul? I mean, Man. you just say it and you like rub your head, but like for a dummy like me, what does that mean? So Seth, if the historical PE in the stock market's 15, let's say we assign a 20 PE. We want to pay 20 times earnings because it has a lot of growth potential, which is still expensive, but has a lot of growth potential. At $110 market, billion dollar market cap, it needs to make $5.5 $5 billion per year in profit, not revenue in profit. Last year, they lost 4.6. Previously, they haven't made profit yet. So to justify today's current value, let's say, he was in, let's say you said, I wanted to make, I'm willing to pay 40 times earnings. It still needs to profit $2.5 billion. $2.5 billion it needs to profit. And let's say the, the bottom line margin, which would be, let's say 20%, which is very high, that means it needs to have $12.5 billion in revenue to justify its price assuming a lot of things. These are all very, very high. Value. And don't forget, guys, cities, just like Uber, cities are now banning Airbnbs. My neighborhood in Mexico, they ban Airbnb rentals. They don't let you rent now for short term. They you don't know, let you do it at all. My, That's a big risk to the business. Yeah, my wife chimed in. I, maybe you guys are noticing this out there, but boy, these extra fees they're slapping on, Paul. They pull you in with $100 a night. Then it's an eighty dollar cleaning fee, and you get nickel and dime till it's back up to a two two twenty, you know, a night. Um, that's crazy, right? I mean, uh, I love Airbnb, and I do think it was transformative in terms of making any room in the world a hotel room. It's been helpful for travelers, but um, yeah, that, that, it's just interesting the uh, the price and where it's headed. Um, Paul, people are saying we forgot about this one, Paul. And I'm glad someone brought it up. We're huge fans of Dan Gilbert, the Cleveland Cavs, and Rocket Mortgage. Can you pull up Rocket Mortgage? As, as you and I both know, that company is absurd. I'd love to see what their price is and what's going on with them. RK. Oh my God, look at that revenue. Look at that revenue last year. See guys, even, even white charts has some messed up data. It's showing zero profit the last two years. Is it really possible they that they broke exactly even? I doubt that. Let's see here. Revenue, net income. See, the net income's not even adding up. It isn't even proper. So market cap of 44 billion, net income of 3.7. I mean, that's a, see, that's not even, look at this. So for everybody who's gonna complain that we have bugs, this doesn't even add up. $44 billion market cap divided by 3.75 is roughly 12 PE, and it's showing a PE of 6.6. .6. All right, so either way, guys, I don't, I mean, Rocket Mortgage did a smart thing by going public during one of the most, Hyped times for mortgages. If you believe mortgages are going to continue on this path for a long, long time, I'm sure Rocket Mortgage, they're the number one lender in the country, 
probably a good bet, especially if they made $4 billion last year in a $44 billion market cap. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's only 11 to 1, so maybe you should consider it. But I'm a big believer in what's more likely, mortgages, mortgage applications fall or go up from here or stay the same. I would bet they're going to fall. I'm not trying to be negative. It's just we've seen record mortgage rate, um, record mortgage applications in the last few years. It's been crazy. Thanks so much for watching the video. We hope you were intrigued. If this style of investing speaks to you, click the link below to join our Patreon. As a patron, you get access to a wonderful community of like-minded investors where you can chat, connect, ask questions, and share ideas with badasses like you all over the world. The best part is you get the amazing Everything Money software. This is revolutionary unlike any YouTube page. Yep. You can track your investments, look at stocks, and quickly run our eight pillar analysis on any company you like. Yeah. The top tier patrons get direct access to Paul and Trader Mo. You'll see their daily trades, their updated portfolios, and every options contract they write on a daily basis. We provide Patreon exclusive videos just for you, including live streams and exclusive content from our team. Our bottom patron tiers fill fast, so join today. But hey, if you don't believe me, look at all of our patrons' amazing success stories. In comparison to other financial platforms, our software is by far the best value. This is your chance to get serious about investing. Yep. If you're finally ready to level up your investing game, join our Patreon and let's start kicking ass together.